Hi, my name is Bridget Richardson. I'm the Assistant Director of Ecumenical and Pastoral Initiatives at the Nesty Center for Faith and Culture at University of St. Thomas in Houston. And I'm here with our president, Dr. Richard Ludwig, and also our uh, board chairman, Curtis Huff. So thank you both so much for joining me today. It's our, my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Bridget. Thank you for having me as well. Yeah, and we're just going to jump right into a conversation about the importance of community. You know, during this time of pandemic where we're in physical isolation, I know that both of you have been working very hard to make sure that University of St. Thomas community stays strong. And you've been doing a lot of different communication efforts to make sure that the community knows what's going on and feels connected to one another. So, you know, just to start it off, how are both of you doing with the pandemic right now? Richard, why don't you start? Thank you, Curtis. Um, well, you know, my wife and I, uh, we live quite close to the campus in Montrose, and so we are uh, practicing the appropriate distancing <laughs> from, from everybody else, but we also make it over to campus a lot, too. Uh, we go there usually once a day or so, and um, so our lives, I think like so many, uh, has become sort of routine, but in that, uh, at least working from home and, and we work a lot from home. So we are in connection and in community with particularly those people who help um, lead the university and, and other important constituents with that. So this time of, uh, as you say, sort of isolation is, um, is not so much isolation in reality for us as it is new ways of connecting. And that's something that we think is really important. Uh, you're finding me live from uh, the home of Bluebell. <laughs> and so uh, we are social distancing. Our closest uh, friends are cows. So, but uh, my wife, uh, Lori Gallagher, who is the uh, director of the Center for Irish Studies, is here with me. And uh, how we are handling it is, uh, you know, thank uh, God that for Zoom and other things like this, because we're able to be able to uh, have conversations with friends. Uh, we've had our virtual, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, wine drinking with some friends. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, we're, it, it's actually been a positive experience. It's changed our lives and how we communicate and how we uh, look at things. So it's, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's a terrible thing we're having to go through, but it's, uh, I think we're learning from it. Yeah, I, I would say that, that there is tremendous learning and, and sort of prioritization. It gives us a time to be very intentional about what we're doing now and what we think we'll do after this time of uh, distancing is over. Uh, my, our grandchild, uh, one of our grandchildren this morning, uh, it was a, it was so sweet, right? So he sends this message. It was a, a video, and he's sitting there talking to his brother and his sister and his mom and dad. And he said, "You know, first thing I want to do after this is just go to Mimi and Poppy's house and give them a big hug and kiss." <laughs> and I think that probably sums up what most people are feeling. And I also think it sort of tells us about the desire to be together. You know, a similar thing. Uh, so my mother lives in Houston, and she's in an apartment place, and uh, they won't let any visitors in, and and all that. And she and my mother loves to talk. She loves to <laughs> see people. She does walk her dog every day in Herman Park, so that works well. But I've gotten her as a result of this. She FaceTimes me. We FaceTime uh, two, three times a day, and I could not have gotten her to do that. Absent, and now she goes, "Oh, I love this." <laughs> and so, you know, you 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 know, you change your life to deal with your circumstances, and you you, you know, as human beings, we evolve and we figure out how to how to make it work, and, uh, and we're doing it. Yeah, and that speaks to what Dr. Ludwig was saying about new ways of connecting and experiencing that and exploring that with other people, right? All right. And how would so, you say UST has kind of figured out some of those new ways to connect with, whether it's the students, the community as a whole, alumni? 
Well, you know, one of the things, uh, if you talk about technology and those kinds of things, one of the things that I've noticed is that we, we do as a, as a university, it seems like we're doing a lot more with video in terms of uh, recorded video and live video through, through Zoom, um, Blackboard, Collaborate, other, other platforms. And I, I think that makes us in some ways more accessible to one another. And that is a true hallmark, I think, of the University of St. Thomas. We are a close-knit community and we have a chance to connect with people in the normal uh, life uh, prior to COVID. And this is sort of a natural extension of that. So that's one of the ways that I see it. And the other is that I sense from being with uh, students in classes occasionally, I'll, I'm, I'll be invited to drop in. And, and I get the sense that people really do hunger and yearn for that community. And so this is sort of like the next best thing. Um, necessity is the mother of invention. And Curtis was saying that about his mother. And I think that's kind of the way all of us are. And so it also brings to light um, that some of us are, are tooled in different ways, right? So. So we may be naturally more comfortable talking to somebody on a screen like this in some ways, but we also, uh, the, the, the gifts that we have are sometimes technological too, where some students and some other uh, faculty maybe, maybe didn't have that, that fluency or don't have those devices. And so one of the things that we as a university are working on is how to, how to best bridge those, those gaps, either in devices or, inabilities of people to connect. And so that's why um, we've brought on board um, a new associate vice president to help build out those, those fluencies, if you will, in our faculty and staff and students and, and some other folks. The other um, happy thing and that, that I'll point out, and this has to do with Curtis and with the board of directors, is that this has, and we, we had already I think a very good relationship but because of the the need to, to pivot and make big decisions we've we've grown closer with the use of these technologies and in this time and I think that's been very helpful to the university as a whole and it's also allowed us to connect with the wider community in additional ways that I think are really going to be fabulous as we move forward. Now there's a subtext to actually what Richard is saying there every morning <laughs> He usually gets about three texts from me. Which is, uh, so so what, what, when I get up in the morning, one of the things is I go through all my emails. And I usually do this between like 5.30 and 6.30. And so <laughs> what, one of the things I read every day is the Chronicle for Higher Education. And, I, and I'll pull out these articles. I say, no, Richard, what are we doing on this? <laughs> and have we thought about this? And so <laughs> Richard has to get ready for me every morning <laughs> to do this. But he now just says, thanks. <laughs> That's the connectedness, right? Like you guys are connected. You feel it. <laughs> we are. You know, and, and I think that's a terrific thing because I, people used to ask me, you know, what makes a strong university? And one of the first things that I would say among several is that the alignment of, of the board and the chairman and the president um, and the administration has to be in really good sync and and this is this is that we have check-ins all the time like I talk to Curtis as much as I talk to any one individual with the exception of my wife now so this is this is great <laughs> and, and, and I will note that uh, you know our board has really shown to be an excellent board in this process um, I mean we have not had an easy year you know, we, as you probably are aware, we started a restructuring in the fall, which was uh, took lots of activity, lots of communication. So we said, okay, we started high fiving ourselves. Not really, but uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the year, and then now we go from what was you know one uh, big challenge to another big challenge. But our board has stayed engaged the whole time. Uh, we're having a lot more board meetings. Uh, and all our board members were always used to being in person and, and doing all these things. And so the first thing we say, we're going to have a Zoom meeting. You know, I'd say 70% of them go Zoom. <laughs> and, and then, and then uh, so they still learn Zoom. Our first meetings we had 
you look at the screen like we're at, you have half of them just with their name. <laughs> no, no video. Yeah. That was me. A lot of them with, that was me. <laughs> with, and then a lot of them with, with just phone calls. Slowly, it's probably 90% plus are on the video. And they are engaging. Uh, and so it's done very well. And also, as Richard was mentioning, we are having to make some decisions pretty quickly. Uh, you know, for example, we have to look at what the fall looks like. There's decisions on how you give financial aid to our students to make sure that they're okay in the fall. And, you know, it's not the easiest thing to call a board meeting with 30 some people you know, on a short period of time. So we operate from uh, in, in between big board meetings through an executive committee, which is all the chairs of all the various committees. But we, one thing we decided to do was to invite all the board members who wish to be on these things, because we need to have a quorum. This is a technical issue. And we're getting for our executive committee meetings, 90% of the board, meeting, board members participating in those calls. Mm -hmm. And that tells you that they are engaged. They are asking, how can we help? Uh, we have people saying, have you thought about contacting this person? I mean, a good, good example, uh, we have a director, his name is George Goolsby. He is a retired partner from Baker Potts. George has a former partner who is the chair of the board of the University of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And we were looking to do, file, uh, do a, a PPP loan, or looking at that, that context. And George says, you know, they did this in, in Dallas. Why don't I put you in contact with uh, his partner? And so we get in, we start talking, we, we're, we're sharing notes. And I can tell you, easily half our board will be proactively saying, hey, I know this person, can we help? Uh, and, uh, you know, in, I, and I know there's often this view that the board is this group out there who has no connectivity to what's going on. Uh, you have a board who basically just wants to make this university the best it can. And, our goal is when we see the university a year from now, this is gonna be a really strong university. Yeah, and, and that kind of engagement uh, from the board has been so helpful for the administration. And when you look at how our faculty and students and staff have really engaged in, in their, their ordinary activities, but in an extraordinary way, it permeates the organization. It makes the university community stronger. You know, at the point where we went to remote delivery of, of our curriculum of teaching, 95% of our classes at the undergraduate level were not online. And 70% of our graduate classes were not online. Within probably 10 days, that changed completely so that everything was was online and and that is a remarkable example of how with in the organization the same sense of let's engage and and solve these issues at the board had penetrated through the rest of the organization and and that's an incredible testament i think to the community of saint thomas and to the individuals that make up that community and i, I would echo that i mean the, the concept that the university in a period of two weeks went to a full online process with the faculty as a community fully embracing what they needed to do for the students, tells you the love that the, the faculty has for this, for the student and the or, you know, organization. And their goal was to sacrifice everything they could do to, to make sure that their students were taken care of. And, you know, I. I can't tell you how proud you know I am personally, and then the board is of of our faculty for what they've done, and you know, and also the students. I mean, the students, you have to look at them, and then they go, you know, this. I don't know if this is exactly what I signed up for, <laughs> uh, and they are, you know, they they recognize what you know that people are trying to do the best they can, and then, and as a you know as an institution, we have to understand their needs and we have to make sure that going forward we're prepared to do the best we can uh, that means we may not you know we don't know what the fall fully looks like uh, but we're going to have to be willing and prepared 
to make sure it works. And we're going to have to do it right. And we're going to have to make sure that we're helping our students get there. You know, along those lines, you know, we're looking at ways to expand the Kelt Care program to help some students who may have conductivity issues, you know, uh, because that's going to be a big issue. And, you know, it is uh, it the perfect world to be. We come in the back in the fall. We're all there together. Life is great. But, you know, reality is probably not going to be fully that way. And so we're going to have to be prepared to deal with whatever, uh, you know, the situation presents to us. Yeah, there's, you know, we're, yeah, we're preparing to be back you know, on class, in classes, on campus in the fall. But we understand that the realities are that even those plans that we make uh, may have to be tempered. And we want to make sure that we keep everybody safe. That's really important. And, and I think, uh, you know, the great thing to some extent is you see change happens sometimes by necessity. And often uh, what happens is if we were to ask people a year ago, a year and a half ago, have you ever thought about maybe having some of your classes online? Maybe you don't need to be in class three times a week. Maybe it's only two times a week. Have you ever thought of those things? The answer is, yeah, but I don't really want to do that. Or, you know, it's, or the student, you know, the, the, we don't have the infrastructure to do that. And what we see now is we have an opportunity to reimagine how to deliver. And that reimagination might be some courses may be online just because that makes sense. You know, because we're going to need to have social spacing. We have to look at, you know, what our courses are like. You know, big courses may need to be on, on an online basis. You just have to take a look at it. And so, you know, when you look at like Chris Evans and his team, they are totally focused on this. They are prepared to do everything they can. And, you know, and they have, I know they have the administration support, they have my support and they have the board support. And, and, and when, you know, one of the things we start out is community, this is our community. And we have to, look at the, what is best for our community and get there. Yeah, and I think too, when you have strong leadership who they can work together and model some of those things that you're talking about, it trickles down into the community, into the students. And I like how y'all are talking about engagement because it's almost two things, right? Like there's your community and the people you're surrounded with, but there's the actual engagement in the process with everyone. And how do you think the work that you're doing kind of will help that trickle down effect of the engagement of the student, the engagement of the faculty with what's going on at University of St. Thomas? Sure. Well, you know, that, that is um, the, the kind of interesting and, and I don't want to say mystical, but it, you know, there is a spirit of St. Thomas that I think we're seeing come into life here. I've mentioned it a couple of times in, videos that we've done and and that is something that I think is is organic in some ways right so we can provide the infrastructure we can provide some of the ideas maybe but the real uh, this is how it works and this is how it affects us as a community is dependent upon each student each faculty member each staff member you know one of the incredible things is we contacted all of our undergraduate students with their personal success coaches. That is a, a, a new thing that has come out of this that, um, that, that we intend to carry forward so that that personal engagement continues to thrive. And so those, those students and the faculty members with the, with the new team that we're bringing in to help them learn some of the new skills, and then they'll bring their own creativity to it. I mean, we, we've seen this happen sort of organically because it's the nature of our people. It's the nature of our community where, you know, we were, uh, Dr. Amin was, was 3D printing masks, right, for the, <laughs> for the healthcare workers. We opened up the residence hall in Guinan for those frontline heroes, the healthcare workers. Uh, those are expressions. And, you know, Curtis has been really instrumental with us helping solve another issue for our students and for those nearby, of course, and that is the sometimes there is food insecurity because people lost their jobs. And so the university is becoming a, a distribution point in partnership 
with the Houston Food Bank. And, and that's already part of what our Veterans Success Center had begun with a small pantry that they have in conjunction with the Houston Food Bank. So we're doing that. We'll have our volunteer opportunities. Uh, that's on campus. And then we'll connect the members of our community who are dispersed with other locations where they can, can find food through the, the food bank. So those are just expressions of how we can, we can maybe help a little bit, but then people take the ball and run with it themselves. And, and that's the true nature of the spirit of St. Thomas. It is a, a can-do attitude, it is a let's, let's see how we can help the other. So the notion of corporal works of mercy um, play out in a, in a true and living fashion here. So we are, we are working with each other and for the betterment of our community and the wider community. And Curtis, as I said, has been really helpful with that connection because he's been very active with the Houston Food Bank. It not only sits on their board, but he rolls up his sleeves and, and distributes food on the line and does that kind of stuff. So when you have that as a, as a model of how we engage with the community, how can you not but emulate that and, and move toward helping your fellow humans? That's what we're doing. And then the, you know, one, one thing, just going back to the universities or culture and, uh, uh, and who it is, you know, cultures can't be created overnight. And so the university has a community culture. And if you talk to students who've gone to the university, one of the things you hear is the community that's created at, at, by the university. Sometimes, though, we all can get looking too much inwardly and forget that we are part of a community. And it's when times like we're at right now where the community has needs that really that culture really picks up and people act selfish, selfishly to really address the needs of, of the community. And you know what I would have to say, when you look at a organization, uh, for things to really work, there has to be a, everybody has to be in sync, more or less. And there is in the corporate world, uh, we call the tone at the top. And, uh, and that tone at the top you know, starts with the CEO, Richard, and Richard, is clearly someone who believes in the community of, the, of St. Thomas, believes in his Catholic faith, and the board we have is absolutely in line with this. And when you see that we all are focusing on the same objective, and we're, our goal is to empower you know, the faculty, the staff, the students to do what they can, I think you're seeing just a just a miraculous moment uh, that is out there where you know we are taking a hard time and turning it into what could be you know we look two years from now I think a great resurrection really of uh, of the university. Yeah, and what I'm hearing too in a lot of these different types of initiative is that. University of St. Thomas as a community is being the hands and feet of Christ in a lot of different ways. So just to kind of tie it all together, how do you see and hope for, you know, that future growth in that expression of who Jesus is in the world and for the Houston community through University of St. Thomas? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, that that's one of the things when you look at this uh, university, and I'll say great university, right? So we oftentimes uh, maybe don't think of ourselves in that way because we have been kind of small and in, in some ways we've been um, not as engaged and with the external as, as we might. But I, I think that our motto, and others have heard me say this, the motto of the university that was given to us near its founding was Chris Camus in Christo, which means let us grow together in Christ. And, and Bishop Nold, who was a bishop at the time in Galveston, Houston, told us that that meant that we were really supposed to grow. And I, I think about the, the, the church or the body of Christ itself on, on, you know, from the time of Jesus, we have continued to expand and reach out and touch people. And in most of the prolific time of growth in the church is really when we touch humans in a way that 
that helps them understand their humanity, but also helps them understand that they were, if they become Christians, baptized priest, prophet, and king. And so that gives us all certain responsibilities, but also certain abilities to engage with the world and to evangelize. And as you said, hands and feet of Christ, that is, that is a true means of evangelizing and sharing the love of Christ. Now, does that mean that we are proselytizing? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that we're sharing the, the caritas, the love, love, the care for others in a way that um, we think is authentic to the true nature of the University of St. Thomas. And it blends so well with the strong academic and other formation rigors that the university has because it gives a means of expression that for someone who may not have been exposed to Thomistic thought or uh, Hegelian dialectics or whatever you want to call it, but they do understand, hey, you're giving me food, you're helping me by um, providing these kinds of, of, of meeting my needs, right? And that's, that's an important window into the soul of who we are, but also a, a means of connecting with others in such a beautiful way. So that's, um, that's, I think, part and parcel of this spirit of St. Thomas that we see emerging so vividly. And just to sort of add on to that, if you, if you think for, you know, how does the university reflect Christ's teachings? I mean, at the end of the day, what is most important you know, from, from my perspective is that the, you, you live what you say you are. And you do, you, you are known by your deeds, not just by your words. And so what is important, I see, is that we, in the formation of our students, we make them the strongest that they can be intellectually to succeed in, in the world. But we also let them be successful in showing Christ's love and showing the love that we're taught to be. And, you know, I, th I think if, one thing what the university can do is create students uh, and help the students when they graduate to be basically signs of Christ uh, in their what they do, not in the process of you know, telling people they've got to do X, but living the word. And, uh, you know, and, I, and I think we do that. And I think, but it's, you know, it's one of these things that you know, we need to make sure that we aren't just solely focused inside within the university and amongst ourselves. We are a community, not just in the university, but in the Houston community. And so that's one of the, one of the things we're trying to do is, as Richard was saying, we're reaching out to businesses, we're reaching out to the community so that people, so that what we are doing gets known and our students are getting placed in organizations and you know, the University of St. Thomas will be known for people who are very well educated, but also show the, the, the love of Christ in everything that they do. Well, I think that ties it together very nicely. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> it's beautiful, you know, as a part of this community and as a staff member, it makes me so proud to see both of you connecting so often to better the university and also to have such a heart for the students and and for their futures as well. So on behalf of the community, thank you for your hard work and it's been truly a pleasure. Well, thank you, thank you. It's great talking with you. Yes. All right, well, y'all have a great day. You too, bye-bye.